The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry. In the modest home of the Great Gildersleeve, there occurs a phenomenon peculiar to male youth. It is marked by the gentle pattering of feet. A small voice at the kitchen door. And a delicate hint of his wishes. What's all the hurry? Saturday. I'm found it, Leroy. Why can't you get up like this other morning? Oh, hi, Uncle. There's nothing to do other morning. That's cool. Well, there's something to do this morning. Leaves. Leaves? Oh, for corn's sake. Uncle, that's the red, dirty old leaves. Leaves are nature's own handiwork, my boy. They're beautiful. And, Leroy? Yes? When you finish raking them, be sure you burn the darn things. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good morning, Brady. Morning, Mr. Gill, please. I had to walk clear out to the curb this morning to get the paper again. Oh, that's too bad, Brady. These confounded paper boys can't see beyond the end of their handlebars. <laughs> uh, where is the paper? Under your elbow. Under, oh, yes. Yeah. Brady, I think I'll have some scrambled eggs and ham with a side order of scrambled eggs and chicken livers. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up, Mr. Gill. Yes, sir. Let's have a comment, son. Oh, please? Comics. You should read a paper by looking at page one first. The big news. Okay, let's see page one. Please. I'm reading it. Here's the comic page. Well, let's see what's happening in the outside world. Oh, man, Piggy, we're going to... Piggy and I, Leroy. Us guys, we're going to play football this morning. Later, Leroy. First things first, my boy. See here, man bites wife's dog in fit of jealous rage. <laughs> Apologizes. Wonder who he apologized to. Piggy's got a brand new football, Unc, and all the guys are going to play this morning. Leroy, you know you have your duties around the house. You can play this afternoon. But by this afternoon, the ball will be all dirty. If, Leroy, if you'll be quiet a minute, I can get the paper read. All right. <laughs> I think you ought to call the paper up and complain about that boy throwing our paper in the gutter. All right. I called him three times, but they don't pay no attention. I think you ought to call him, Mr. Gilson. All right, Bertie, I will. I think you ought to call him, you being the water commissioner and all. They keep hiding it in the gutter. How can anybody read the paper? Yeah, Bertie, how can anybody read the paper? <laughs> Now, how about my breakfast? Coming up, Mr. Gill, please. I'm not one for complaining, but the only way you want to Now, maybe a man can read the paper in his own home. Water commissioner faces possible jail sentence. Poor fellow problem. Whoa, water commissioner? Uh, Uncle, all the fellows are going to be playing football this morning. Oh, Springfield water commissioner. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't think it was me. <laughs> Emerson Brunker, Springfield Water Commissioner, today faced a possible fine of $10,000 or 10 years imprisonment, or both. Uh, both. For malfeasance in office. I could rake the leaves this afternoon, huh? Yeah, all right, Leroy. An audit disclosed a shortage in Brunker's department of $5.52. Hmm. Probably betting on the races. Or tomorrow, maybe, huh? Yes, yes, Leroy. If Brunker says... Hey, thanks, huh? Oh, Leroy! Leroy! Confound that boy. That was deliberate malfeasance. We'll have to ask Judge Hooker what malfeasance means. Good morning, Uncle Moore. Well, good morning, Marjorie. Well, you look so different today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sit down and have some breakfast, my dear. Did you sleep well? Just fine, Uncle. You want some more Miss Marjorie? Oh, if you please, Bertie. Oh, what's in the paper this morning, Uncle? Uh, same old thing, trouble. Springfield Water Commissioner's about to get the works. 
That wasn't intentional, my dear. It just came to me. That I believe. Uh, yes. Well, this broker, he's the commissioner in Springfield. Accounts were short $5.52. Obviously, the man is incompetent. I was just about to read his statement. Uh, let's see here. Unky, hold the paper up a little more, will you? What? What a darling place suit Hogan Brothers are advertising. Why, George, I'm going to work where I can read this paper in peace. And besides, you're too big a girl to be wearing a play suit. <laughs> Want to go along? I'd love it. I simply must get to town today and pay my water bill. Or that nasty old commissioner might have my water turned off. <laughs> that commissioner is a regular ogre. He gobbles up little girls. I know it. Especially ones from Savannah, Georgia. <laughs> well, we can't go any place sitting here, can we? Yeah. Did you say you wanted to pay your water bill, Leela? Mm-hmm. Isn't it simply terrible that I have to go all the way to town just for that? Well, the Summerfield Water Department has just this very day inaugurated a new service. It has? Oh, it certainly has. We now collect payments in the water commissioner's car. What? <laughs> <laughs> but only from our favorite customers. Oh, Throckmorton, you're sweet. <laughs> Am I really, Leela? Oh, you certainly are. Here, now, I'll have the bill and the money in this envelope, and I'll put it in the breast pocket of your coat. <laughs> Tickle. There. Now, do you know where it is? Sure, it's in my breast pocket. Rock Martin. What's the matter? It's right over your heart. Oh. <laughs> now, you won't forget, will you, Throckmorton? Forget? They don't call me Elephant Boy for nothing, you know. Well, yes, but but I thought that was... <laughs> I thought that was because you're so fat. Oh. Well, thank you, thank you. I'll attend to your account the first thing. Oh, I'm sorry, Throckmorton. Now, I don't know what ever made me say that. Quite all right, Leela. Now, if you'll excuse me, oh, I'll be... Oh, don't be mad at me, Throckmorton. Let's Martin. forget it, Leela. Let's. Uh, Throckmorton, I wanted you to come to a little tea party this afternoon. I just happened to be stout, that's all. Oh, now, let's not talk about it anymore. All right, all right. I hope you won't be busy this afternoon. You know, some men are born with four thumbs. <laughs> Stout men, really I do. Especially handsome ones. Oh, boy. <laughs> what time is your tea party, Leela? Oh, any time. I thought it would be nice if I started having afternoon teas. Just intimate little affairs. Uh, <laughs> sounds like a great idea. Great. I thought we'd sit around and drink tea and I'd bake cookies. Would you like that, Rock? Oh, I'd like anything you do with those dainty white hands, Leela, especially cookies. And uh, afterwards, we could sort of rest on the sofa and discuss things. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds real cozy. Mm, just you and the judge and I. Uh, judge Hooker? What's he doing at our party? I invited him. <laughs> Why, Throckmorton, Horace is your best friend. Well... And besides, he said he can't stay long. Oh, well, in that case... Then I'll expect you the minute you get through work. I might even fudge a little. Oh, I hope so. Well, Throckmorton, hadn't we better be on our way? On our way? Well, if I'm going to bake cookies, I have to hurry to town and pay my water bill. Well, I thought I was going to do that for you. Oh, Throckmorton, whatever makes me so giddy. I'd like to think it was me. <laughs> Maybe it is. You have such a fine brain, Throckmorton. You never forget a thing, do you? Forget? They don't call me elephant, I never forget. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you. <laughs> Once there's a place to park right in front. Darn smart alley kids these days. Did you do it that time, Gildy? 
Hooker, you old goat. Yeah, well, here's another space. You old goat, what's the idea of taking my parking place? I don't see your name on it any place. First come, first park. Someday, Horace, you'll go too far. That reminds me, I have to go now. See you at Leela. Uh, 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 just a minute, Horace, old friend. Friend. What do you say we ditched that tea party? What? You know how these affairs are. A lot of, a lot of idle chit-chat that doesn't mean a thing. Well, I'm not fond of tea parties, but I promised Leela. Oh, come on now. I'll make some excuse to Leela for both of us. I don't know. What do you propose in the way of a substitute? Well, why don't we, just the two of us, go up to Grass Lake and get in a little fishing, huh? The season closes next Wednesday, you know. I don't know, Gilday. Come on, Horace. Just think we could wear our old clothes. <laughs> you wouldn't even have to change. <laughs> Well, you would, or you'd scare all the fish away. <laughs> well, very good. <laughs> what do you say, Horace? Let's rent a boat and just drift while we strengthen our friendship with real man talk. Man talk? What's that? Man to man. Ye gods, Horace, haven't you ever talked man to man? Or is it always judge to victim? What, for instance, would you call man talk? Just what would we talk about? Anything. Politics, love, murder, anything you like. Come to think of it, Gildy, I would like to get your reaction to that story about the um, Springfield Water Commissioner getting into trouble. As your friend and attorney, I'd like to know, is there any danger of an incident like that here in Summerfield? Certainly not. Well, you know what happened, don't you? Of course I do. What? Why, according to the statement he gave the police, he was so far behind in his collections he had to juggle the books. And that's how they trapped him. How are your collections, Throckmorton? Never better. I keep my department in apple pie order at all times. Well, there may be one or two delinquent accounts. Well, look what happened to Brunker. Oh? You'd better watch those delinquent accounts, Gildy. Turn off their water just once, just once, and I guarantee they'll pay up on time thereafter. But, Judge, you can't go around turning off people's water. What if they get thirsty? Well, they can go down to the drugstore and buy a Coke. It... How would they wash dishes? They can go down to the drugstore and buy some paper plates. Well, how would they take baths? They can great Caesar's little fishes, Gildersleeve. You're the water commissioner, not the guardian of the public's ablutions. You have a responsibility to the state, to the people as a whole. When the time comes to be tough, you've got to be tough. <laughs> it's no use, Judge. I'm not tough. I'm just lovable. <laughs> <laughs> Now, that's the trouble. Don't you worry about the water department, Horace. How about it? We going fishing this afternoon? Well, sounds like it might be fun. Great, I'll meet you at the boathouse. I've got several things to attend to, so if I'm a little late, you row on out and fish till I get there. Well, all right. See you later, Gildy. <laughs> what a sucker. By the way, old man, if I'm a little late, you fish till I get there. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> And we'll find out whether Hooker swallowed Gildersleeve's bait in just a minute.
back to the great Gildersleeve, who at long last is arriving at his office. Hi ho, hi ho, it's off to work we go. Good morning, Bessie. How's everything? Bessie? Bessie, where are you? Confound that Bessie. I'm going to have to get rid of her. She's out of the office so much I'd get lonesome if I were here very often myself. Uh, let's see what's to be done today. Oh, have to get a new chair one of these days. Uh, letters to be signed. More work to this job than most people think. Kind of fun signing letters, though. Wonder what Bessie has on my mind today. Dear sir, this is to inform you your water account is seven months past due. Seven months? Ye gods, what do you think we're running here? A public drinking fountain? Don't tell me all these letters are delinquent notices. Uh, six months, eight months, three months. Well, that's better. Eight months, twelve months. Gee, that's almost a whole year. Why, George, it is a whole year. Confounded people, why don't they pay their bills? I certainly hate to turn off their water. Gildersleeve, are you a man or a mouse? What's that got to do with it? You've got to be tough about these things. You have a responsibility to the state, to the people as a whole. You're derelict in your duty. Imagine me, a derelict. I am not. You are. I am not. You are. I'm <laughs> arguing with myself. But I'm right, like I told Hooker. When the time comes to be tough, you got to be tough. The old goat. Let's see, what's that waterworks phone number? Uh, uh, three, two, Oh, Charlie, this is the water commissioner. What do you think we should do about people who don't pay their water bills? Uh, it's your business, commissioner. My job is to see the mechanical equipment keeps going ten years longer than it should. Confound it. <laughs> Can't you express an opinion? What's the matter, commissioner? Job too big for you? No, the job isn't too big for me. Then why you call me to make your decision? I'm not calling you to make my decision, Charlie. I've already made one. I want you to turn off everybody's water who hasn't paid their bill for three months. Uh, three months? Right. I'll have Bessie make a list. You can pick it up in an hour and start right away. This afternoon? Okay, Commissioner. Oh, by the way, tell Bessie not to put my name on that list. I'll bring the money when I get it. <laughs> Charlie, what do you do with all your money? All my money? Listen, that tight word with my salary, I can't... Oh, Father Charlie, can't you show a little respect? After all, I am head of the water department. Okay, waterhead. Oh, <laughs> And don't call me waterhead. Water Commissioner. Yeah. What a commissioner. Yeah, that's better. Mm. Oh, uh, Bessie, is that you? Yes, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, come in here, Bessie. I'm found that we're running an office here. Did you want something, Mr. Gildersleeve? You can't just go wandering off whenever you feel like it, Bessie. By George, your place is here. How are we ever going to get the work caught up if we just keep dashing out? Yes, sir. Yeah. No, I'm going to be gone for the rest of the day, Bessie. Let's see. Seems like there was something I was supposed to remember. Uh, pay the gas bill. Oh, no. Haven't got my third notice yet. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, Bessie, Charlie Anderson will be by in an hour to pick up a list of accounts and link with more than three months. Yes, sir. I knew I'd remember it. <laughs> <laughs> What can I do for you today? P.B., give me about a half a dozen cigars. Here you are. Just help yourself, Mr. Yonsei. Thanks. P.B.? Yes, Mr. Yonsei? What would you do if, uh, you paid your water bill, P.B.? Well, now, Mr. Yonsei, I have to lay ten to the month. I, I hardly think it's necessary to start dunning me so soon. That'll be 93 cents. No, no, no. All I meant was, uh, you aren't delinquent, are you? <laughs> if you mean by delinquent, have I ever been in trouble with the police? The answer is no. That is nothing serious. Confounded, Peavy, I don't care if you have a private cell at Joliet. I'm talking about your water bill. <laughs> I'm just telling my little joke, Mr. Gildersleeve. Has there been a mistake in my statement? How should I know? You're the water commissioner, and I thought... Stop thinking. I want to ask your advice on something. Well, I'm always glad to give advice, Mr. Gildersleeve, even if there's no profit in it. The, uh... 
cigars were 93 cents, Mr. Gildersleeve. Look, Peavy, I did a pretty drastic thing this morning. Too darn many people have been playing on my generous nature. They let their water bills go as long as 12 months. So I'm having their water turned off. You don't change. Yes. Mm. Now, what would you do if you were water commissioner? Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, I think the first thing I'd do is sell this drugstore. <laughs> Look, P.B., forget the drugstore. Mm, what a pleasant thought. <laughs> and you know, if I could get elected water commissioner... P.B., I... just forget the whole thing. Well, I thought you wanted some advice. No, you're too late. I've already acted. Well, I didn't mean to make you mad, Mr. Gilbert. I'm not mad. If anything, I feel gay. Uh, you see, P.B., I'm expected by a certain party at a certain time. That's so. Yeah, at a certain place. And if things go right, there'll be just the two of us there. That's so. Yeah. <laughs> well, aren't you curious? Curious? I mean, isn't there any question you'd like to ask? Well, yes, there is. Uh, about how many families would you say will be affected by your cutoff order? If you must know, about 40 family peavies. Why? Well, I wanted to get a line on how much extra soda I wanted to order. <laughs> you don't miss a trick, do you, Peavy? <laughs> Can't afford to, Mr. Gillespie. As I was remarking to Judge Hooker just a few minutes before you come in... Hooker? I... Was he in here? Yes, he was. He wanted to buy some oil of citronella. Ah, uh, the judge always takes citronella on a fishing trip. He draws flies, you know, P.B. Well, got to dash off. That was 90 cents for the cigars and 3 cents for the governor, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah. Put it on my bill, P.B. I've got till the 10th of the month, too, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Morton is here. Hello, Angel. Hello, sugar pie. <laughs> Hooker, you old goat, what are you doing here? I thought you went fishing. I did, and I caught something, too, you big fish. <laughs> Why are you scheming, conniving, double-crossing? Well, now, wait. Just wait until I tell Leela how you tried to persuade me to go fishing with you. Maybe you can try a little of your man talk on her. Look, if you say anything, I'll break your... Hello, Leela. What have I you two barred arguing about? Well, this morning, Gildy and I had a little man talk. He suggested... Yes, a man talk. You wouldn't understand. Well, I'd like to know why not. I declare, Throckmorton, you're getting more and more like my late husband, Beauregard. I wonder if that's a compliment. He was always keeping little secrets from me. Though I'm sure it didn't bother me in the least. Merely annoyed me. Well, this matter is no secret, Leela. As I was saying, uh, uh, Shall we go in and make ourselves comfortable? Uh, dibs on the easy chair. <laughs> I'll sit here on the sofa. Uh, I'll sit on the sofa, too. Uh, say, this easy chair is comfortable. You want to try it, Horace? No, thank you. Now, as I was saying, Leela, Gildy suggested... Uh, did you make the cookies, Leela? Oh, I promised, didn't I? As I was saying... Uh, Horace, you tell Throckmorton about it while I get the cookies. And I'll get the tea ready while you boys pass the time of day. All right, Leela. We'll just chat a while. <laughs> you old goat, you. You four-flusher. <laughs> you old goat. You just wait until I tell you. Here she comes now. Uh, no, Judge, I don't think it'll rain. Throckmorton. Yes, Leela? Are the cookies ready? Yes, Throckmorton. <laughs> That's nice. And the uh, tea? There isn't going to be any tea. Oh, forgot to buy some. Well, never mind. Horace can run down to the grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, my water has been turned off. Well, it'll only take a half a dozen on his What'd you say, Leela? I said my water has been turned off, Commissioner. <laughs> <laughs> well, really, Horace, I don't see anything funny about it. Horace told me to turn it off, Leela. Well, Judge Hooker. I just wish some of my male relatives were here. Now, wait a minute, Leela. I did nothing of the kind. I merely advised the commissioner here to turn off the delinquent subscribers. I had no idea you were one of them. I'll have you know that I'm not. I gave Throckmorton the money this morning. Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> did you pay my water bill this morning? Throckmorton, answer me. Uh, bill water? Um, water bill? 
Throckmorton, what do I see in your breast pocket? It looks like an envelope. Yeah, snitch. It is an envelope, the one I gave you this morning. This is all your carelessness, Mr. Gildersleeve. And why don't we all go over to my house and have tea over there? Well, Horace might like to. You may count me out, Gildy. I just remembered a previous engagement, to go fishing. Well, if Horace is going fishing, yes, I'll come over. <laughs> Get the cookies spread out, Leela, while I make the tea. All right, Trout, my lord. That's it. And now for some water. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, Leela, I'm afraid I got you over here under false pretenses. Aren't you sweet? <laughs> when you stand like that, with your mouth open and the words pouring out. You're lovely too, Leela. Let's go sit on the sofa, huh? Hey, Uncle Lloyd, how can I drink a bath? No water! Oh, Leroy, go to bed. He'll be asleep in a few minutes, folks. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. This week's story was written by Frank Moore and Bill Kelsey. The cast includes Walter Tetley and Lillian Randolph, who play Leroy and Bertie. Leela Ransom is Shirley Mitchell. Judge Hook, Judge Hooker is Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand plays Mr. Peeble. The music is by Jack Meekin. This is the Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education. <laughs>